Good day, brothers and sisters. Cap Mark here, and welcome to Feast at Home. I'd like to welcome everyone, yung mga kapatid natin dyan, sa palibot. Feasters, our brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome po sa The Feast. And we are now in our new series titled, Fulfilled. Talk to na po tayo. And it's titled, Betrayed. <laughs> Today, I'd like to preach the message, God wants you to eat and drink. His love. 
for the past two years we've been what we've been unpacking the gospel of Matthew yes na subok pa rin tayo na Matthew and ngayong araw na to we arrive at the start of the climax the last meal of Jesus with his disciples before he dies <laughs> ang lahat ng binasa natin leads to this point and it leads to this point in the story <laughs> let's read Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went to the leading priest and asked, How much will you pay me to betray Jesus to you? And they gave him thirty pieces of silver. From that time on, Judas began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. Matthew juxtaposes or has a close comparison for two opposing stories. One is the story of devotion. And yung isa is a story of deception. Last week, binasa natin story in Mary of Bethany. Di ba? No, well, Beth- Mary loved Jesus so much that she anointed him with extravagant perfume. But in today's story, <laughs> pinagpalit ni Judas si Jesus for 30 denarii. <laughs> Magkano yun? No? A denarii is a daily wage in ancient times. So in modern Philippines, 30 denarii uh, is around 15,000 pesos. Or in other words, Judas sold Jesus for the price of an entry-level smart television. <laughs> Anong lesson dito? Wise people give up everything to follow Jesus. Foolish people give up Jesus for loose change. Perhaps Matthew wants us to ask ourselves are you Mary or are you Judas do you give up everything for Jesus or do, do you give up Jesus for what turns out to be nothing well I realized that you no know, I become Judas when I you know when I give up Jesus for my sins like pride gluttony <laughs> envy yeah. what well, truth is the the 30 denarii is not worth it it's not worth it diba? okay don't exchange jesus period let's all pray our favorite prayer here in the feast in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen today i receive all of god's love for me today i open myself to the unbounded limitless overflowing abundance of god's universe today i open myself to god's blessings healing and miracles Today I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I'm God's servant, I'm God's powerful champion, and because I'm blessed, I'm blessing the world in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Punta na po tayo. Let's go to the core story of today's reading, <laughs> which is the Passover meal. Jesus died on Passover. Here's why. Let's read. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, which is another name for the Passover, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to prepare the Passover meal for you? As you go into the city, he told them, You'll see a certain man. Tell him, The teacher says, My time has come and I will eat the Passover meal with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus told them and prepared the Passover meal there. Ito ko mga kapatid, a little explanation of a Passover meal. Passover is the biggest Jewish feast because it is the origin story. It is their origin story. Once upon a time, they were a bunch of slaves in Egypt suffering under the cruelty of a pharaoh. But God rescued them and made them a great nation. In the reading, it gives you this sense that Jesus planned their Passover meal very well. Including the fact that it was done one day earlier than everyone else. This is clear in the Gospel of John, but even in Matthew, on the first day of the festival, of the festival Bible scholars believe that uh, this was sunset of the previous day. Because that's how Jews counted their days. Nag-uumpisa lagi at the sunset. Now, why celebrate it 
one day earlier. Jesus knew that by his time tomorrow, he'd be hanging on a dirty cross. My point, what's my point? Jesus died exactly on the feast of Passover because he wanted to tie these two things together. What God did in the first Passover and what God will do through his death. It's the same, but much, much greater. Let's go on reading, verse 20 to 24. When it was evening, Jesus sat down at the table with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. Greatly distress each one ask in turn, Am I the one, Lord? He replied, One of you who has just eaten from this bowl will, with me will betray me, for the Son of Man must die as the scriptures declared long ago. But how terrible it will be for the one who betrays him. It would be far better than that man, for that man, if he had never been born. Question. Have you ever been betrayed before? <laughs> na pagtaksi lang ka na ba? <laughs> now, if an acquaintance betrays you, acquaintance, hindi pa masyado masakit, di ba? But... If it's a really close friend, it hurts deeply. Napakasakit. <laughs> Jesus must have been hurt deeply by the betrayal of Jesus. He was part of 12 disciples. Diba? His inner circle. Diba? Nakasama niya nagtrabaho. You know, someone who worked with him, diba? traveled, and lived for three long years. Fact. Our deepest wounds come from people we love because we only drop our defenses with the people we trust. I have always wondered why we have the power to hurt God. Now I know why. <laughs> when God relates with us, He drops His defenses. He becomes vulnerable. He brings us into His inner circle and trusts us with His heart. Now, is Jesus simply a teacher? We continue reading verse 25. Judas, the one who betrayed him, also asked, Rabbi, am I the one? And Jesus told him, you have said it. Judas called him Rabbi. Ito yung unang pagkakataon na in Matthew, a disciple called Jesus Rabbi. Every other time, disciples called him Lord or only outsiders call him Rabbi. Perhaps this is Matthew's question. Is Jesus your teacher or Lord? Or will you simply listen to him? Or will you obey him? Teaching made edible. Verse 26, let's read. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take these and eat, for this is my body. And he took up he took a cup of wine and gave them gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. <laughs> Jesus was going to die. In Matthew, he predicted, well, he predicted it three times. You know? but, he, but his disciples are still confused. The disciples are still confused. Why should he die? How will his death benefit anyone? For obvious reasons, they wanted Jesus alive. Yeah. They needed him alive and powerful so he can oust the Romans. They couldn't fathom why he had to die. Now, may I insert this truth? May I? We don't understand it too. Even to this day. Even to this day. Kung magtatanong ka sa isang katoliko, how does the death of Jesus save you? Diba? 
may, many you know, magkakanda utal-utal na po and uulitin lang yung sinabi nila na natutunan nila sa skwela from their religious class now how we wish Jesus wrote a book to explain it all diba? like uh, a book that says the doctrine of my death and why it's good for you <laughs> written by Jesus Christ or since he's God anyway Jesus could have you know, recorded a video of himself giving a theological discussion of salvation but here's what happened Jesus didn't write a book to explain his death what did he do? he gave them a meal the meal was the explanation of his death let me describe to you what happened in the Passover meal Describe ko po sa inyo to. We may not know the precise details, but we have a broad idea because the ritual was passed on from what, generation to generation. Now, I want you to imagine the disciples with Jesus. Not seated in a straight line like Leonardo DiCaprio's The Last Supper painting. Yan, makikita niyo po. Hindi po ganyan. Ganito. As how they ate in that part of the world 2,000 years ago. Well, yung tipong nakaliyad o nakapatong ang mga siko sa mesa. Yan, parang ganyan po sa picture. The Passover meal had four cups of wine. Each cup moving the ceremony from one part to the next. So the cups were ano, siya yung structure ng meal. Yeah. And each time the father of the family said the, cost- said the customary blessing, Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the world, who create the fruit of the vine. Throughout the meal, there would be rituals like karpas, which is the yung pagsausaw, dipping of the vegetable in salt water. Ang salt water symbolizes yung bitter tears nila. They also ate the maror, or the bitter herb, symbolizing the pain and bitterness of their slavery. After the second cup, may konting drama. The youngest person in the family, yung bunso, would ask the oldest person, Why are we doing this? Tapos yung panganay would retell the story of the cruelty they suffered under the Pharaoh's rule and how God stood up to Egypt. Like with the nine plagues, yung frogs, yung flies, yung boils, yung hail, yung logos, yung darkness, and so forth. He would then say that on the night of their escape, every firstborn in Egypt would die. But the Israelites were saved by the blood of a lamb. God told them, kill a lamb and place, it, place its blood on the doorpost of their house. When they do that, that will pass over their houses and not touch them. <laughs> Note, this was a pure gift because God did not just protect the most religious Israelites. He protected everyone who trusted Him. This was their origin story that the Jews would remind themselves again and again every year. But in the middle of the Passover meal, Jesus does something shocking. Shocking, yes. This is a little awful. Huh? Jesus takes unleavened bread. Why unleavened? Dahil nung gabi na yon, when they had no, no first Passover, they had no time to wait for yeast to make the loaves rise. Para umalsa. They were, they were in a hurry because they were going to escape from Egypt that night. Jesus takes it and blesses it. But he says something very disturbing. He says, This is my body. <laughs> As Catholics, uh, if we hear in the Mass so often, we don't realize how awful that sounds. Imagine if I said, Hey, this cookie is my body. I made it with my flesh. Please enjoy. <laughs> That's horrible. But what is bread is but something that's beaten, pounded, rolled, kneaded, and placed in a hot oven. And just a few hours after the meal, that was what was going to happen to the body of Jesus. 
yes, Jesus was going to die. But bread also means life. Bread nourishes you. In the same way, Jesus' death nourishes you. Then Jesus takes the cup and he shakes them up again by saying <laughs> something horrific. Uh, he said, this is my blood. Uh, who in his right mind would want to drink his blood? Kakapanood ko ng mga vampire vampire na isip. Para di natin natablahan. But this was not just any blood. You know? This was the blood of the covenant. Jesus' blood. He was using the same language from the first Passover where the Lamb's blood became the symbol of God's protection. In the same way that God rescued Israel from slavery to, to from the Pharaoh, Jesus rescued you from your slavery to sin. But wait, where is the lamb? Huh? The missing lamb. The strangest thing is that when the Gospels retell the Passover meal, there was no mention of the lamb. But if you are a Jew, this is very strange. Passover needs a lamb. But when Jesus celebrated the Passover meal, there was no lamb. Diba? Kaya yung mga apostles, di ba? Baka nagbubulungan sila doon, di ba? Parang oh, kumaga, parang ganito eh. Gee, oh, konti lang ba donations kayo? Ba? Di natin kaya bumili ng lamb? Parang ganun. But there was no lamb. But there was no lamb on the table because Jesus was already the Lamb of God. As gross as this may sound, the host was also the food. Now, in just a few hours, Jesus was going to die. So that spiritual death will pass over us. Now, through the meal, you won't just understand it. Now, I repeat, Jesus could have explained his death logically, right? intellectually, rationally, or just having, having notes for that, right? but he didn't. Instead, he fed people with a special meal that was already woven in the hearts of the Jewish people for 2,000 years. For every Jew, it meant freedom, deliverance, God's favor. But Jesus reshapes the meaning of the meal by inserting himself as the sacrificial lamb. God doesn't just want you to understand his love. Through the Mass, God wants you to eat and drink His love. Kaya mga kap, mga kapatid, every time you celebrate Mass, even if it's online, see yourself as one of the disciples. Sit around the table of the last meal. See Jesus at the head of that table and hear Him say, This is my body. This is my blood. Yes, Jesus invites you to the greatest meal that will last forever. Yeah, mga kapatid, brothers and sisters, God is madly in love with you. He loves you so much, He fought for you to the point of death. Respond to His love today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you Lord sa message mo sa amin ngayong araw na to. Thank you Lord sa pagpapunawa sa amin ng ginawa mo to save us. Yeah, Lord, we ask forgiveness for our sins. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, Tuloy namin hiling Lord na uh, ilayin niyo kami sa kapahamakan at bigyan niyo po kami ng isang magandang linggo na darating. Lord, thank you Lord for uh, keeping us safe. Kaya Lord, patuloy namin hilingin na iwas niyo kami Lord sa anong mga kapahamakan. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Peace be naman. I miss you all. <laughs> and uh, well, the struggle is real, di ba? Kaya mga kapatid, no? uh, always uh, stay safe. Be safe. God bless us all.
Bye. 